So thank you for your work. We're going to uh, shift continents uh, again here <laughs> to show that this is not something limited to uh, Asia, um, Europe, or, or North America, but we're going to uh, South America. Okay. And uh, Dr. Silke Weber is uh, from uh, Sao Paulo, from UNESPI. And uh, she is a uh, leader in pediatric sleep in Brazil. And um, uh, she's a pediatric otolaryngologist who is also a sleep specialist. And uh, she's an advocate participant, uh, a very active participant in committees in leading societies around the world. And we're very glad to have her engagement and have her, her passionate enthusiasm and work in myofunctional therapy. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Berry. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, I would like first to congratulate Mark for his continuous effort and for this fantastic uh, idea and uh, for this fantastic moment to bring all of us together and to congratulate all the speakers who participate before me and right after me in this symposium, because I think this is a unique chance we have to change, to interchange our, our knowledge and what we are doing. So I am uh, from Botucatu Medical School. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. Botucatu is in Sao Paulo, right in the middle of Sao Paulo. Uh, the UNESP State University is a university um, of a multi-campus idea, so it is present in 23 cities of the state of Sao Paulo. The only medical school is just right in the heart. We are attending about 2 million inhabitants in our region for more specific uh, um, attendances, just like polysomnography. Uh, we, we cover a population of about 4 million people, so it is really a lot. When we look at orofacial motricity, uh, in Brazil this area became a specialization and a certification in 1966. Uh, and main topics, as already had been said, cover uh, several parts of the orofacial motricity, as orofacial func functions, as breathing, speaking, mastication, deglutition, the tonicity of the muscles, mobility, the widening function of the upper airways, all of this is covered in orofacial evaluation. When we look at over orofacial myotherapy in adults with OSA applied to it, uh, we have Katja Gimarães, a speech language therapist from Botucatu. Uh, she first described which uh, disorder of soft tissues could be found in OSA patients. She used this as a monograph for her to uh, her certification for the orofacial motricity, uh, motricity certification in Brazil. And she was also the one who did the first randomized trial to apply exercises derived from orofacial uh, motricity to uh, adult OSA patients. And she was very successful in it. And now we know, and everybody showed this review already, so we know that orofacial uh, or myofunctional therapy uh, can reduce AHI, will improve oxygen saturation, and will improve the, uh, um, the hypersomnolence, the daytime sleepiness. I'm very proud to say the Brazilian Association of Sleep Medicine, of Sleep and Sleep Medicine, was the first one to include other health allied uh, professionals to be part of uh, the certification in sleep medicine. So, uh, in, since 2016, speech language therapists are certified in sleep medicine also by, by the Sleep Association in Brazil and this year we will have the fourth certification. When we look at the mouth breathing child, we know that there are specific signs and symptoms associated pre to the predominantly aura breathing habit. It has health repercussions in the medical area, in the orthodontics, 
and the physiatrics, phoniatrics, and in oral functions, as you had already seen by all the other speakers before me. What we know and what I want to show and what, why, what I want to reinforce is that the treatment of oral breathing is feasible and the early treatment of oral breathing will prevent chronic repercussions. We had so many histor historic reports. So, uh, Dr. William Hill in 89 described the mouth breathing child of the stupid looking lazy child who frequently suffers from headache at school, breathes through his mouth instead of his nose, snores, and is restless, restless as, at night. Similar as Dr. Kevin said, we are rediscovering what old physicians already described. These are all symptoms of ulcer. So the characteristics of the mouth breathing patient uh, is mostly regarded to the classical adenoid phase pattern or the long phase pattern characterized by the vertical growth and the narrowing of the face, a high arched palate, by hyperdevelopment of the maxillaries, the open angle of the mandibular, small nasal vestibuli and early development of deviation of this nasal septum. You have uh, more occlusions or by class two, by overjet, by cross bites, a hypotonia of the lips, high position of the tongue, beside other symptoms. The causal factors are mostly hypertrophy of the tonsils, as it was already mentioned. Uh, hypertrophy of the tonsils uh, will occur mostly in, in the age frame from three to eight years old. But we have to look also at nasal resistance. Nasal resistance in the growing child is a very important issue. Mostly if we look at the very young child, where the most important factor for the nasal resistance is nasal dysfunction, mostly caused by rhinitis, allergic rhinitis, or irritative rhinitis by, by uh, pollution factors as passive tabagism or air pollution, as for example in our big cities, just like Sao Paulo. Uh, the older children uh, will have nasal resistance mostly regarded to anatomic obstruction factors, just as nasal septum deviations or uh, um, as the palate is very high arced, you don't have the opening, the widening of, of the nasal area. So when we look the main symptoms of pediatric ulcer are, are, are very, very overlapped to the mouth breathing syndrome. We have the hypertrophy of the tonsils, we have snoring, we have the mouth breathing, the craniofacial dysmorphism, hypertonus of pharyngeal muscles, and all this overlap make us look to what we can do with a mouth breathing child. When we look at treatment of choice proposed by most of the academies for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea, we will see that adenotonsillectomy is, is shown to be the treatment of choice. But the treatment of choice does not resolve obstructive breathing. The treatment of choice will uh, the treatment of choice will uh, the treatment of choice will be able to reduce to reduce ulcer in just only a very small particular part of the children when I have no comorbidities. Not only half of the children will recover from ulcer. When I look at an IHI uh, 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 under five, it is even. It's a little bit better, but, but not more than two-thirds. So for gold standard treatment, it is really very, very few. If I look at comorbidities as very young children under three, or with obesity, or even syndromic children, just like Down syndrome children, it is even worse. So some groups proposed to open surgery to the soft tissue, not only adenotonsillectomy, but to include tough, soft tissue with some improvement in, in, in their results. What means? 
they are looking at soft tissue. So soft tissue sh might be an issue. We know this. We know that children with hypertrophy of the tonsil have altered function of the soft tissues. They have alteration in mastication, in deglutition, and they have alterations in the, in the, in the functions of the orofacial muscles. When we evaluate our child coming to, to our ambulatory, we will look at... Oh, sorry. Yes. We will look at deglutition. Deglutition, we will look at how. Ooh. Okay. How the child will. How the child will. Sorry, I'm left handed. Um, how the child will force, will strain the lips and the mentin area to keep the mouth closed to make a deglutition. This is important to see. And we will look at, at orofacial mobility. Cadê o volume? Que lindo, pro ladinho. E pro ladinho. Okay. So, we will see that this child has difficulties in mobility and the orofacial area. She does not move rightly. When we look, does this, does this improve when we perform adenotonsillectomy? No, we have only a partial improvement. This was a study that was realized in just a very, very small group of children. It has to be open, it has to be uh, repeated by a much larger population. But this study already showed that we have only a partial improvement after ad adenotonsillectomy of all these soft tissue uh, functions. So this, this group recommends that myofunctional therapy should be started if you don't have any improvement one month after adenotonsillectomy. Well, we looked at our children uh, three to eight years after adenotonsillectomy and re-invited them to perform a deglutition e evaluation and an, an orofacial evaluation. And what we found was that most of the children still had tongue position and problems, label sealing problems. During deglutition by video fluoroscopy, they had residue in the velaculum Molecular, and they use compensatory maneuvers for deglutition, just as head lifting. Uh, what means that these alterations are kept even years after adenotonsillectomy. We know by the study of Maria Pia that myofunctional therapy can, in, can improve the positioning of the tongue can reduce oral breathing and the lip hypotonia and can restore the normal tongue position and increase mean strain, uh, uh, tongue strength. So the association of tonsillectomy and orofacial myotherapy will improve the tonus of orofacial muscles, improve diurnal and nocturnal breathing and improves functions of the uh, orbicularis oris seen by uh, Glatzel tests or by oral facial evaluation. We have tested this in our children. Yeah. So when we look, I'd like to reduce volume, but it is difficult. Yes. So when we look, this child just had, this boy had just uh, uh, hypertrophy of the tonsils and mouth breathing. He was submitted to adenotonsillectomy and he improved AHI and his OSA score. But uh, only after myofunctional therapy, he resolved obstructive breathing disorder and improved his, his, his OSA score. And when we look, you see the, different, the difference in the position of the child and the difference in the tonus of, of the face. So uh, this was seen and 
The study of Guillaume no, of Professor Guillaume no, was cited already by, by a lot of people, seeing that uh, orofacial uh, uh, myotherapy uh, can reduce uh, recurrence of obstructive breathing disorders even two to four years after first treatment, which is adenotonsillectomy. We know that the craniofacial growth is related to all functions of the muscles uh, and even today, there is still low evidence that only adenotonsillectomy will improve this craniofacial growing. Just looking at the muscles that compound the tongue, um, just to show you, when you have altered angle, angles and, and an alteration of the length of the mandibular, you will have different angles for the muscle in its origin and its insertion in the lens and in the tonus. So you will keep dysfunction of the muscles when you don't have the ideal anatomic frame. And that is one of the reason to be uh, a risk factor for adult also when a child has obstructive breathing disorders. Beside treatment, we also think that myofunctional evaluation will help in screening children for the risk or for the diagnosis of obstructive breathing disorders. When we look at all the questionnaires, the questionnaires have a high sensibility to include children for, for sleep disordered breathing, but most of them have a very low specificity. To, to, to say this is also or that this is just snoring or mouth breathing. Maria Pia was the first one, Maria Pia Vila, she was the first one to, to include in this questionnaire some of uh, clinical symptoms and signs of craniofacial alterations, just like septum position, dental occlusion, arch palate, and she was the first one to include phenotyping for separate uh, uh, the risk for ulcer in children. She had a very high sensibility, but uh, uh, the specificity was still very low. <coughs> so last year, we uh, combined a short evaluation of myofunctional evaluation with a sleep clinical record in Italy and in Brazilian children, uh, including evaluation of lip tonus, uh, tongue position uh, of deglutition and of breathing modes. And when we look at the results, the combination of this short myofunctional evaluation together with the sleep clinical record, this improved the, specific, the specificity of the screening for ROSA in children. So we think that orofacial myomotricity is definitely impaired in mouth children, mouth breathing children. Craniofacial growth is impaired in mouth breathing and predisposes to orofacial motricity impairment. Craniofacial dysmorphism is a risk factor for also for the child and for the adult. The myofunctional therapy is important as a treatment or a co-treatment for mouth breathing and ulcer. Myofunctional evaluation improves ulcer screening and improves phenotyping. And when we look what are the future in research for sleep disordered breathing, myofunctional evaluation or therapy certainly will enter as a topic for future research because it will improve the definition of phenotyping, it will improve the understanding of the underlying mechanisms, the prognostic implications, and it will, it will help us to, to find the optimal treatment of patients with obstructive sleep disorders. Thank you very much.